Pittsburgh Steeler fans, what is going on? This is Jeff Hartman, editor of BehindTheSteelCurtain.com, with you for another episode of the Steelers Preview as we break down the upcoming Week 14 game in the desert against the Arizona Cardinals. And joining me, as always, to round out the triumphant trio, we have Brian Anthony Davis, looking very festive with a tree in the background. What's going on, Brian? Feeling good. Feeling a whole lot better this week. So it's that every other show that I look good. <laughs> You're a flaming bag of dog poop on the front porch. <laughs> yeah, I I believe the exact comment was that I look like I smoked a bag of dog crap, which I don't know what that means. Do you look like a smoked bag of dog crap or do you smoke a bag of dog crap? It looked like I smoked a bag. Hmm. But that's Something interesting. Like that. This, by the way, for people listening in audio or maybe you're watching live on YouTube, this was an actual live. That was in the live chat, wasn't it, Brian? Um, it was on the YouTube comments, actually. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, essentially, someone commented on the video saying that Brian looks like a smoked bag of dog poop every other show or something. We found it wildly hysterical. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> it actually, like I said, they look like I smoked it. That doesn't make much sense. Anyways, uh, so let's bring in Dave. Dave, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going. I'm 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 festive. My 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 <laughs> tree go. won't light up because I had to use my USB port for my headphones. So, <laughs> Is that so a gummy light... bear? No, it's, it's, you just kept around way too long. Dude, it lights up. It lights up good. This is my, this is my wife's festivities for her office here in the house. So, but like I said, I couldn't plug it in because I want to be able to talking here maybe some of you would prefer if i put the tree in instead of <laughs> my headphones well don't read youtube comments that's what we've come to find <laughs> out after all this nonsense. whoa but let me just go ahead and uh singapore wow there you go we got some yeah. in singapore it's pretty cool to see where everyone's tuning in from and i echo what uh david said earlier a belated happy birthday to mr brian anthony davis thank you uh, this is i was purposefully didn't say anything last night because i knew we were doing the show tonight so uh how's it feel to be 35 um i tell you what i mean it felt really good back in uh 2006 <laughs> <laughs> but thank you i appreciate it i mean you're like 11 uh so i mean you look i mean you look young and then there's me I have an early, I grew an early beard. So anyways, um, let's get right to the, um, let's get right to the around the horn segment. Not a ton of news this week, but nonetheless, there's probably something that we want to discuss and talk about. Dave, we'll start with you. What's your topic for around the horn? Oh, let's, let's go with the really obvious one. Let's go with the AFC North being extremely well, uh, represented when it came to AFC players of the month, mm. Good specifically point. our Steelers representative of one TJ Watt on the defense. So that was a no brainer because he should be in the discussion for defensive player of the year. And it was also a no brainer that it was Lamar Jackson from the Ravens that was, that got it for the offense. Is is it just me or is no one talking about TJ Watt? Like no one. It's hard to tell because I listen to Pittsburgh people. So, uh, when I hear TJ Watt, I hear Pittsburgh people talking about TJ Watt. I don't hear enough talk of him when I listen to other stuff, but I'll be honest with you. I don't listen to enough other stuff to know that no one's talking about it. This is, uh, this is where Brian comes in. Brian listens to a lot of other stuff. Brian, are you hearing anyone talk about TJ Watt for defensive player of the year or anything like that? Not at all. It seems like uh, the Bosa's are a sexy pick. You're always going to have Aaron Donald, but here's the thing. Pro football focus has him has him ranked number one as far as edge rushers. Um, so, and where he's looking at as far as being in, in the sack race, um, he's only a couple behind, um, I believe it's uh, Shaq, says it's Shaq Barrett in uh, in Tampa. So he's he's only a couple behind there. He's very close to James Harrison's team team uh, record for a single season so you know what i mean i think people are going to start to catch on i think it's actually going to with this player of the month um honor that he just received i actually think it's gonna he's gonna gain some steam especially as the team gains some steam in december dave answer this question because i know you'll know and i can't remember off the top of my head during the month of november did he ever win an afc defensive player of the week award Ooh, I, 
I don't know that he did. I did he, I Brian? Did he, Brian? I, I think so. Um, well, I know. Well, I know. Two thousand nineteen. Yeah, in this year. This year. So I know he has in his career, but I'm saying like, what? How crazy hmm. if he wins? If he won it for the month, but never won it for a week during that month. Well, but that's not crazy because you could have one really good week and then fall off the map for the rest of them. This is saying that he was right there week in and week out for the entire month, which he has been for the month and the season. Yeah. All right, All right Brian, what's your around the horn? Well, you know what? The clock has turned to December. And in the Mike Tomlin era, when actually, let me rephrase that, the calendar has turned into December. And usually in the Mike Tomlin era, when it's December, that team goes on even more of a roll. Um, last year, not really, because in uh, late November, everything started. The Things kind of went downhill, but that was a very odd year. But they still ended up having a uh, winning record. And one more win and that threat of a losing season that everybody thought was inevitable back in uh, September and early October is uh, probably not going to, and probably and hopefully not going to happen. So it's, uh, we always want to go ahead and uh, put the bullseye on Mike, Pro Mike Tomlin for all of the problems, but just like clockwork here it comes. And this team is getting stronger. And if this little change at quarterback takes shape and uh, takes amazing weird shape that um, history shows us that it's not supposed to, but if something happens that it does, then it's just going to be another magical December. And uh, we have a lot to be excited about this year. So when it turns December in Steeler Nation, you know what? Uh, under the Christmas tree, everybody's getting more and more Steeler stuff. And uh, there turns out to be uh, like a new cool Steeler Here We Go song. And uh, it's it's all starting to take shape. And I'm feeling some deja vu. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it didn't hasn't Mike Tomlin in his entire tenure lost single digit games in the month of December in his entire career? I want to say that his record in December is ridiculous. Oh, it's I believe it's uh, something in six. Yeah, so he's lost his like single digit games in his entire tenure in Pittsburgh. He's been the coach since 2007. That's remarkable. And right now he's on track and technically if you look at these last four games, we're going to talk about that in a second. He should have another reasonable record. Dave, what are your thoughts on that? Uh yeah, we're, it's it's looking pretty good to well, it, I I'm mainly the first part that Brian's talking about when you know getting away from not having a losing season. I mean, we're, they're they're right on the cusp there, and I also like. It, it's interesting because the worst thing about this December, I mean, you've already got one win in it. You've got one win for December, so you, so you know you're not going to go winless in December. I don't like that the games that that are there. I hate to call them lesser competition, but it's this late in the season. You could say that or on the road. So it's not like it's the, the best path. They only have one more home game left out of the last four. So, but it could be shaping up that the, the most, the, your most dangerous opponent is at home because it could also be shaping up if everything falls right, that the team that they're facing the last week of the season might want to be in, let's not get anybody hurt mode which is always a nice thing to have to go against. Although the Steelers have still fared pretty well in those games, even when they've done that. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about December. It's great to know. I mean, who would have thought back in September that we would be in this, that we'd be able to talk about stuff like this in December. I mean, I know we had hopes. I mean, we had a lot of hope with stuff going on, but that's because we just wanted to see the Steelers succeed no matter what. But to, to actually have it come through in the way it is, in spite of all the other things that have happened, this is fantastic. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, 0-3, 1-4, oh and it was the it was horrible. The lowest of the lows for the Steelers fan base. And our website was feeling it. And, you know, you just think about how crazy this season has been. <laughs> they made they traded their first round pick away when they hadn't won a game yet. <laughs> I mean, and just, and not, like we said, the only reason the Dolphins picked the Steelers is because at that time they're like, yeah. oh, 
They're 0 and 2 and just lost Ben Roethlisberger. They're going to give us a higher pick than anybody else. So people want to say, "Oh, just imagine if we had Minka and Ben." I don't think the Dol- Dolphins would have would have gone with the Steelers if it wasn't for Ben getting hurt. That's a that's a situation I'd love to know the inner workings of both sides of that trade. Like I would love to know who else was actually involved in, other, in terms of other teams, what they were offering. Did is that true? Like they, I'm sure there is a lot of truth to that that they saw the Steelers as a potential top ten draft pick because of the way their year was going. I would you'll never be privy to that information, but I'd love to know what that was. But I want to kind of go ahead, Brian. I I was just going to say that I think that the Kansas City Chiefs were definitely involved in that conversation, and at the time it looked like they were going to be a fourteen and two team because, of course, nobody thought uh, Patrick Mahomes would be getting hurt, um, and that they would be having some problems at uh, running back with that running game as well. So you know, I I just uh, think that there was other teams, and they're looking at it and saying, like Dave said, hey, we could really take advantage of the season have possibly two top 10 picks. But the bottom line of the whole thing is that we're not you. The Pittsburgh Steelers franchise is a team that doesn't have to sell. They're a team that usually doesn't give up. Like Miami was given up pretty early. I mean, just right away, they were, they started tanking and that's just something that we don't do. And, (laughs) I love Lance Williams. I'm sorry. It just made me laugh. This is actually my living room. I appreciate that. I, I'm sure my wife will really appreciate you saying that I'm in the bathroom and those are her curtains and they're not from the 70s. Um, but, but no, I'm not. Oh, my God. Well, right. I haven't seen what Lance said because I'm be- further back in the live chat because I wanted to give a shout out to one Aaron Hoffmaster who says he's coming from Charlestown, West oh, Virginia. Yeah. And if and if and for all I know, I've run into you at the Hollywood gaming establishment because I always talk to Steeler fans there. So uh, maybe sometime I'll catch up with you there if you ever see me. I was in Ranson today, actually. Wow. So the right next door to him. I yeah. Am- I have visited Charlestown. I went to school in Shepherdstown, so I've been to Charlestown more times than I'd like like to. We'll put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I want to piggyback on my around the horn quickly, and it's kind of similar to what you all mentioned, um, especially Brian. I love the fact that no one is taking this team seriously. Like, no one is. You don't hear national pundits talking about them. They are always a footnote. They are the, oh yeah, and the AFC is so bad that the Steelers are 7-5 and five and they're the sixth seed. I love the fact that no one is talking about the Steelers because I truly feel that Mike Tomlin's bread and butter is the underdog role, the no one is betting on us role, the oh my gosh, n- not one single person on this blah, 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 whatever site, whatever t- show thinks we even stand a chance. It's like I said to Lance Williams last night, and I'm not counting my chickens or counting my eggs before they ask, hatch. They got to get into this, the playoffs, but when they get into the playoffs, all you need is to punch your ticket. You just need a ticket to the dance, and anything can happen. And I brought up the 7-9 and nine Seahawks team. I couldn't remember who they played. They hosted the 13-3 and three Saints, I think, I believe that one year, and that was when Marshawn Lynch went off. And they actually beat him, and they advanced the division round. Anything can happen, but I love the way this team is trending, especially from a national perspective. No one's talking about TJ Watt. No one's talking about anything other than the fact that really the only publicity they've gotten is Miles Garrett and Mason Rudolph. And the fact that an undrafted rookie free agent that wasn't even on an NFL roster in week one beat Baker Mayfield last week. That's it. That's it. I love it. But this is also why this week scares me a little bit. So, Brian, you listen to more national stuff than I do. I do listen to some. But at the same time, I'm not hearing any chatter about the Steelers, and I like it that way. I I love it that way, and there's not a lot of chatter. The only thing that is going to uh, pop up if the Steelers go ahead and go and beat Arizona and Duck does it in a pretty decent fashion, then he's going to start being a darling. And you're watching Pittsburgh make him a media darling already. 
And I'm not loving that, but this guy deserves his moment in the sun. Uh, he's hanging out with Aquaman at the Penguins game. Um, he is he is becoming um, the guy around town. I mean, the men in the hills are singing songs about him. Um, they're all excited about this guy. Um, and I'm excited about this guy, too. But when the national media goes ahead and uh, catches wind of this whole thing, and a little bit more than that's when you got to be, you got to worry about uh, them getting too much spotlight. But right now it's them against the world and kind of like it that way. Like no one's talking TJ Watt. Nobody's still, nobody's really talking about Minka Fitzpatrick and he is leading the league. He's tied with McCourty and Marcus Peters with interceptions. Um, everything he's been doing, no one's really talking about that. No one's talking about the great season that Bud Dupree is going to have. Everybody's going to be talking about him in March but nobody's talking about him right now. And so I kind of like it that way. But when they start talking is when I worry a little. Yeah. What about you, Dave? Well, right now it seems like the more they're talking about duck, it's almost, almost, almost in jest. If you think about it, because they call him duck and he wasn't drafted and he was FCS. And this is who the Steelers are down to. And then he wins. But it, it's almost like, I don't know. Sometimes it almost angers me because it almost seems like they're making fun of it more than embracing it. I mean, if you've seen stuff, of course, of course, when they're asking people in about the playoff picture and stuff like that, there's still tons of people that aren't taking the Steelers seriously, even though they're in the sixth spot right now. They're not picking them to be a team that gets in. And I like it. Bring it. Use it. Play hard. I agree with what Brian said. If they win this week, they move to eight and five. I want to say that their percentage, I saw on pro football Focus's Twitter account that if they win this week, their percentage of making the playoffs jumps up to like almost 75% mm-hmm. according to them. That's significant. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how things pan out. A uh, couple questions that popped up during the around the horn segment. One of them was about week 15. Someone wanted to know, are you all still going to the bills game? That's that's the Brian has to answer that question. The last I heard, you were like two women bickering. They couldn't make a decision. Oh, it's up to you. No, it's up to you. No. Dude, I don't know. It's like guys just make a decision. Either go or don't go. At this at this particular juncture, we are planning on going to the Steeler game and yes. the Bills game. You should be a politician. That is uh, <laughs> that is what we're planning. Hey, um, we're you not know, loving the fact that it got flexed because we are a good bit away. Yep. And uh, we're f- over three hours away. And so that's a that's a situation that uh don't love, but I do love the idea of still going and hanging out with the BTSC faithful. But here's the deal. Chat room, anybody around, whether you're going to the game or not, if we're coming, we want to hang out with you. So uh, you need to start uh, RSVP in to see if uh, to see if it's worth us making the trip. Well, I guess that's a good spot to say if you're going to be there, you need to reach out to Brian and Dave and say like, hey, we normally go to this parking lot or we normally go here to tailgate because you all probably jettison over on the uh, Clipper, right, Dave? Isn't that your normal that's, protocol? That's what I always do unless it's not running. The one, The only time I haven't done the Clipper is the one time where it was flooded. That was the playoff game, the last playoff game. But other than that, that's what I do. But I'm also letting Brian help decide the kind of things he wants to do as well. This isn't just my show. Every time I go to a game, I'm always in charge of getting everyone there, getting everyone out, and it's just kind of who I am. But with Brian, we can we can handle this stuff together. You know, I'm easy like Sunday morning, So we're, but we're going to do this. I mean, <laughs> there's uh, there's no reason. Um, so, uh, Corey, he's six miles from downtown Pitt. Pittsburgh. So Corey, <laughs> come hang out with us. Well, I like believe my... you just said I'm easy like Sunday morning. I, mean, I, know well, I thought he was easy after, after a 2 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I'm easy like Sunday morning. Hashtag 2 a.m. Hashtag See, and just and that's my that's my concern. <laughs> if Brian and I go to a night game, then that means I'm going to be with Brian at 2 a.m. on the road. And that's just uh, I don't know what to do. Well, you know Ron what? Chess said you guys can stay at his house. There you go. I'll put that hey, up. Hey, wow. So 
You know All what? Right. I, Do you have a, I, ahead, I, Ryan. We're, Seattle we, has two losses. <laughs> we're gonna know. <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm in on this. Now I'm excited. I haven't been to to a game in a couple of years. And you were there last year. Oh yeah, I was. I was week two. But it was it was the it was the home opener, so it it feels like the city years. game. Yeah, it was the uh the one o'clock and two, you two know games shy of two seasons. The see the Steelers ruined it for me. They got hot, you know. Now the national uh, now there's a little more national attention, and they they want to go ahead and put them, flex them because no one wants to watch. Uh, two kids. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. There, there, there's nothing broke back about that mountain. So <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> All right. Are we ready for Stat Geek? I can quit you, Dave. I can quit you. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can we? <laughs> oh, oh. All right, Dave. Go ahead with the Stat Geek. Stat Geek. Oh, my goodness. I have so much stuff. I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> Here's here's the first one, okay? Okay. Over the last seven games, what's the Steelers' record? What's that? At, at the last seven games? After, over the last seven games. They're five and two, right? No? Last seven? Last seven. They're six and one. They are six yeah. and one. Right. And the only team that, that is undefeated over and over that time would be... The Cleveland Browns. Bottom, bottom. More Ravens, Cleveland Browns. They just beat the Cleveland Browns. No, yeah. well, wait. I'm sorry. The no, that's the, undefeated. The only Ravens. team that's undefeated. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought you said the Ravens they defeated. Yeah. So um, right. that's yeah. that's once again good representation from the AFC North. There are only two other teams in the NFL that have only one loss over the last seven games, and they are not AFC teams. Only one loss. Only one loss in the last seven games. Uh, so, okay. I'm going to say... Gonna, uh, go ahead, Brian. Take guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah gotta, because they yeah. only have two losses. Yes. And, uh, I'm going to say New Orleans. And that would be the other. So, yes. So, the Steelers are in very elite company right now. And that's the thing. that the, They are on the streak of all these games. Now, part of that is they looked bad in the, in the game that they lost. They won a couple games ugly in there, but that's, and they have not been, they've only out of those seven games, I think they've been favored in only three of them because they weren't, they weren't favored against the Colts. They weren't favored against the Rams. They weren't favored either time against the Browns. They were favored, so they've only against, been, they were favored against Miami and they were favored the two games against Cincinnati. Okay. So they've only been favored three out of those seven games. Now the Colts game was was like a one point, you know, they were a yeah. one point underdog. But but still, that's that's a very that's a very impressive streak that not like I say because of the makeup of the team and everything that people are not talking about. So that's that's one thing. An another thing, some of these are just some questions I wanted to pose. Well, I'll, I'll do this other thing first. That um, you guys know that one of the things that's been driving me absolutely crazy all season is opening drives. Yep. It's been the biggest reason that I've been critical of Randy Feetner. Now I'm going to say something because some people take this the wrong way and I'm not dialing it back. I'm still very upset with Ray, Randy Feetner and his play calling, but it could be that he's asked to do something else. It could be, it may be, maybe this is the line that he's hearing. Hey, first quarter of the game, don't kill us. You know, maybe that's what he's being told. I'm, I am frustrated with the play calling. I'm frustrated with the, with the creativity there. But you've really got to hand it to him for taking these young guys, guys that were on other teams weeks ago. I mean, whether it's him or his assist or the other coaches that are a part of the offense and getting those guys out there ready to play and produce. So as much as I want to bust on him as a play caller, I'm not going to say that he doesn't have other things that he's really good at, which is – being able to incorporate all these guys into a game plan. But let's go back to the to the bad opening drives. Um, this is how this is how bad it is. The Steelers are tied for 31st with the number of points scored on their opening drive on the season, which is still only opening the points scored on opening drives. Points scored on opening drives this year. I don't think they scored a touchdown yet. They have not. I'm going to say it's been six points, two field goals, maybe. I don't even know if they've. 
Have they even gotten a field goal? I don't, I don't think know. they've gotten a field goal. Zero point? It is three. Oh, my because God. Because they got the field goal against San Francisco when they got the turnover <laughs> to start the game, but didn't move uh, the ball. Okay. So, you got, so they're tied for 31st with the Texans with only three points in the opening drive. They are in dead they are in dead last 32nd place with 3.4 average plays per opening drive. Uh. Um the next worst is 3.9. They are dead last in the NFL with 4.8 yards per drive on the opening drive with the next worst being 14.2. So they are almost 10 yards less than the 31st ranked team on opening drives with getting yards per drive, um, which is interesting because they only have 58 yards total on opening drives, and 53 of them were in two games, the Patriots and the Colts, the only games they really got first downs that moved the ball. Um, one ended a punt, the other ended in, in an in a interception. And they are tied for 31st in average time of opening possession of one minute and 56 seconds so to say well maybe they just get slow because you know that's like historically bad for the Steelers so as much as you don't want the offense to kill you to start you also you also want to feel like you can do something because when you defer which I love deferring because of what happened last game you get seven points at the end of the half you get seven points to start the next half it's great but if you don't when you defer that your defense basically has to defend two drives or you're going down two scores before you even start. And that's almost what happened last game. They because it took them two it took them more than two drives to get a first down. They were already down 10 nothing before they had a first down. So starting faster would be much better. But rather than dive into that too much, I just have one last question. This was a stat I saw today, and I wanted just wanted your guys' opinion on it, what, what you thought of this. And this was out there that this was comparing Devlin Hodges and Mason Rudolph, their tendency, their tendencies in 2019. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, their average time to throw is almost exactly the same. It's off by 0.02. Um, their um, the tight window percentage, Rudolph was 10 points higher than than Hodges, but I just – but one stat that's not here is I think Hodges throws guys open way more than Rudolph. I don't know that Rudolph ever did. Um, their completion percentage is both in the 60s, but what's crazy is the pressure rate. Devlin Hodges has a pressure rate of 15.6, while Mason Rudolph had a pressure rate of 45.1. So he was pressured – Three times more often than Hodges. Hmm. Do you guys have any thoughts as to why that was the case? What constitutes a pressure? That's a good question. Because Devlin Hodges has better pocket mobility and can escape the pocket. So does yeah. that count as a pressure? Um, well, I would say if you have, to, I, I, I'm pretty, I don't, don't quote me on this. Someone else might be able to help in the live chat. I think if you have to flee the pocket due to pressure, then that counts as a pressure. Okay. You know what I mean? So what do you guys think? Um, I see what Dennis threw out there. What do you guys think of that one? Is the offensive line playing better with Hodges? Ah, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, Rudolph and a lot of people are saying it, he, he would step into pressure. It seemed like sometimes I, I, yeah. just, I, I don't know. And they say, and actually the average time to throw, it was Rudolph's that was lower. So they say Rudolph took too long to throw. Not the case. Average time to throw for Rudolph was 2.82 seconds. And for Hodges, it's 2.84 seconds. So not that it's a big difference either way, but I had a theory, but I wanted to know what you guys thought. Brian, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, uh, if you look at the first half of Mason Rudolph's 2019 season, um, the if you cut it into, let's say, like eight games um, or before the concussion, um, it seemed like he was less rattleable, or is that a word? But he could be rattled less. And it seemed like they were he was getting rattled a whole lot more after the concussion when he came back. Um, I don't think Duck Hodges gets rattled. And I and maybe it's the fact that I don't know whether it's the fact that they respect his arm more. Um, because I would actually think they would respect Mason Rudolph's arm more, but with the fact that he's not afraid to take chances 
And it seems like uh, towards the end, Mason Rudolph was afraid to make chances. So just like, hey, let loose and go after him. That's what I'm thinking. What are your thoughts, Dave? What's your theory? My theory is, did defenses feel, because Rudolph didn't go up against any defense in college, that Rudolph could not read their defense as well, so therefore they could cover it with less people and they could send more people to pressure him? I don't know if that's the case, but that's one possible answer that that I thought of is did they know that and if you pressured him, he was antsy in the pocket that 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 they could make him uncomfortable and they would send more pressure. I would love to see stats and I don't have this to break down. So maybe I don't know, maybe someone who breaks down all the film can tell me this, <laughs> Lance Williams. Um that how many rushers did each quarterback face on average? You know, were they rushing three? Were they rushing four? Were they rushing five? Were they rushing six? So I'm just wondering if on average, if they sent more people and then that's, that's why Rudolph had more pressure, but they felt like they could send more people because he wasn't finding the open man. It's interesting. And the comparisons between the two quarterbacks are going to be there for the rest of the season, especially if Hodges continues to play well and really takes that spot. Um, anything else for the stat geek this week? Oh no, that was more than enough. I talked forever for you guys. No, that's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to some talk that I want to reach out. Uh, well, I reach out, talk about. Brian did an article that I ran this morning, and it was based on the uh, four games remaining for all the teams that are considered contenders in the AFC, and that includes those that are vying for the wild card spot. Um, I wanted to take a look and think what you guys, I want to get an idea as to what you all thought about, not just the Steelers' final four games. We've talked about that a lot. But what about these other teams? You know, the AFC South is going to really, really throw a wrench into a lot of different things. Because when you look at the seeding, let's assume that the Patriots and the Baltimore Ravens are going to finish 1-2 one way or the other. Not sure which. Uh, but let's just, you know, after that, you have the Chiefs hanging around. But the Chiefs are actually the four seed right now because the Texans have the head-to-head -head win over them. They have the same record. But will the Texans remain in the top of the AFC South because they still have to play the Titans twice, right, Brian? Yes, the Texans and Titans go twice. And the Colts are still vying for a spot there. And really, those are the teams that are considered, in my opinion, legitimate in the hunt teams. Brian, you did the article. Is there, is there anyone else that you're throwing into the mix for that six spot? Maybe Oakland? I'm not you're sure. You're still throwing Oakland in there because Oakland's uh, schedule um, could be considered relatively easy, even though it is Oakland, though. They have to go on the road to play teams like Denver and the Los Angeles Chargers. But a very interesting game next week to really pay attention to is Tennessee traveling to Oakland. Mm. And that is a very big game. And what a lot of people don't understand, you know, we go ahead and put out that article um, rooting guide. And the thing about the rooting guide, a lot of people, um, as soon as they see the Patriots, as soon as they see the Ravens, automatically Patriots, Ravens don't care who they're playing. You meant Dave and I and Tony and I were mentioning that uh, you're going to root for Dallas on Thanksgiving Day over Buffalo. And that was blasphemy. Steeler fans can't root for Dallas. That's horrible. Um, no, but you know what? Sometimes you need help. This weekend, you need help from the Baltimore Ravens to beat Buffalo because really, you, you know, I mean, you're not mathematically limited, but come on, the Steelers are not going to win the NFC, the AFC North. It's not going to happen. So if Baltimore's going to keep on winning, they might as well beat a team that's in your way. I mean, you don't have to go ahead and openly root for them, but when, when it happens, you're like, all right, well, I mean, at least they beat someone we needed, we needed them to beat, but the teams to look at, I mean, Oakland's back to Oakland real quick. Last week in the rooting guide, I was saying, you know, root for Oakland. And everyone's like, well, Oakland's right behind us. You, you got to root against Oakland. I'm like, well, if Oakland takes over Kansas City and wins the division and you get Kansas City out of the playoffs, much rather end up going to Oakland in a um, in a uh, wild card situation on the road 
right where the Steelers have it. tons of success. See, I I don't I don't believe in that because they yeah. they went out and beat Los Angeles. They they you know that's the past. This I is know. a different Steeler team. Sorry to interrupt. But, Go ahead. Yeah, but I I, I, I get it. you guys were thinking the same thing, and I I knew that was going to happen, but um. So, you know, that it's wide open. I mean, Cleveland's not eliminated yet. I put them in there, but they're, they're pretty much out of it. The Colts, for the Steelers, with, with the Colts losing this week, the Colts are a team that you worry about less just for the fact that you have that tiebreaker over them as well. Um, both the Colts and Titans have to play the New Orleans Saints. And the Colts also have to go ahead and play Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay is a very good offensive team right now. They're a very weird team. They're, they're a head scratcher. But things are going to shape up. And they're going to take a lot of shape in this week alone. You're going, to see, uh, you're going to see the wild card take a little more shape right after this week right away. Um, so you'll see what happens. But... Getting back to Jeff's original comment, Texas, the Texans and the Titans, those two teams are going to control everything. And I'd, I would rather go to Tennessee than go and face the Texans. Well, and so this, is, this is where Steeler fans, if you're someone that's like me, that watches the playoff race and the wild card race and the playoff picture, because I write the articles, multiple articles a week, outlining everything for fans so that they can see it. Brian does the rooting guide and he puts the playoff picture in there as well. Where do I always look at it this way? If you're saying that the Steelers only chance in which I am saying this is, this is a wild card team. Would you rather be the five or the six? That depends on where you like the matchup. Would you rather be going to Kansas city or would you rather be going to Houston? And could you get the five seed? You could get the five seed if the Bills lose this weekend to the Ravens, the Steelers beat the Bills in week 15, and the Bills still have to play the Patriots one more time. That's three losses for them, and you'd have the head-to-head -head tie with them. You could catapult yourself into the five spot. But again, maybe you would like the six spot better if the Texans keep winning. The Texans, if you say, I'd rather go to Houston than I would to Kansas City, then you would want to stay in the six. Because then I'm not saying that they're going to play the results like that. This is a fan speaking. This is not, I'm not saying Mike Tomlin is looking at the AFC playoff picture saying, let's just lose a week 17 so we can stay the six and play the Texas. I'm not suggesting that at all. But that's the way I think. That's the way I look at things. I look at things and say, and you know, I know Dave wrote the article earlier in this year about like, let's just take it one game at a time. And I get that philosophy. And the people in the live chat have already said, let's just get to the playoffs. Screw that. I'm talking about the Steelers are in the playoffs. Let's see who we want to play in the playoffs. You know why? Because I'm not a coach. I'm a fan. That's why. Dave, I'm sure you've been wanting to say something, so go ahead and... Uh, oh, oh uh, there's so much. Well, another article that ran today, um, somewhat similar, but they both uh, um, got a lot of um, views and discussion and things like that, similar to what Brian did, was I did three games to watch this weekend. Mm -hmm. And with the la and I've been doing that for a, a long time this season. Um, it had been in the beginning, it was more about let's figure out what the teams are, you know, what tells us about teams the Steelers are going to be playing soon, you know, matchups against teams that the Steelers play both teams or they've played one and haven't played the other stuff like that. Well, when we get the last four games, we're like, forget that. What's going to need what what means the most to the playoff picture? So the three games that I had I had picked was obviously uh, the Tennessee and Oakland game. I put in the Baltimore and Buffalo game for two reasons. One, because the Steelers play Buffalo the next week. Um, and then I threw in the, the, the Kansas City New England game because they very well could be playing for whoever wins that game has has a upper hand at a tiebreaker at a first round bye. So the Steelers could be dealing with the loser of that game in the first round as a wild card team. But one thing that I did mention is when it comes to who to cheer for when it comes to the Ravens and the and, and the Bills. The Ravens, I mean, the Steelers could still win the AFC North by winning out, which would include defeating the Ravens in Week 17 when they would have to play for that game. The Steelers would also, um, and and sorry, not the Steelers, the Ravens would have to lose to the Bills and would also have to lose to either the Jets or the Bengals. So uh, while it's still possible, I would call that highly improbable that they, that they would lose to them. But 
My other thing is I've been cheering against the Ravens so long and they're beating these teams that I thought they weren't going to beat this week. When I want them to beat the bills, watch them. Let me down <laughs> just because it's how it goes. Yeah. I feel the same way about the Patriots. I've been wanting them to lose for forever. All right. Finally, Patriots, I can want you to beat someone, go beat the Ravens. And then what they did. So that's when I've learned when I, when I really want to, when there's a team that I always cheer against and then i want them to win it usually doesn't work out well so i don't even bother go ahead brian i know you want to say something too yeah i i love what you said earlier jeff here's the deal first of all we've got jobs to do here and our job is to write articles and i it drives me crazy every time when says well you should be talking about the playoffs one day to game at a time you know what we, you're right, Jeff. We are fans, but we also have to look ahead. You want articles from us. You want content. We have to look ahead. We have to do that. That's our job. So when I'm looking ahead, not only am I thinking that if we're going to look at these scenarios, we have to assume that the Steelers are going to do their job or these scenarios don't matter. So exactly. we're already thinking if they win, and I have mm -hmm. to put that stupid disclaimer every single time in, well, of course, the Steelers have to take care of business because someone's always keyboard warrior blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 and it drives me crazy but the bottom line to the whole thing is you're assuming they're going to win and not only are you looking at those games you got to think if we go ahead and win as a sixth seed or a fifth seed and win that first playoff game would we rather go to new england would we rather go to baltimore and you got to think about that too you think ahead the whole way that's the job of us. You want content, you're going to get content, but you better give us leeway. I, I, I think there's a, there is a perfect time, even, even as a fan and content and everything, when you really start to focus on the playoffs. I think it's the way the NFL season works out and the way that teams even look at the NFL season, and they look at it in quarters. And when you hit the last quarter of the season, you were talking about teams that are legitimately playoff contenders and ones that aren't. And guess what we hit this week? We are starting the last quarter of the season. So this is the time to talk about it because this is that time of year to, to do it where these last four games mean the most. Well, and in my opinion, this game, and it's the headline of this episode, is with four games remaining, this, this game in Arizona is absolutely gigantic, enormous, gargantuan, whatever adjective you want to use to describe how big this game is, it's every bit as big as that. Because if you look at the Steelers' four remaining games at Arizona, home versus Buffalo, at the Jets, and at Baltimore, you have to ask yourself, and I'll ask you guys this real quick right now, is nine wins going to be enough to get you in? Brian, do you think yes or no? Yeah, I, I think they are going to be enough to get in because I don't expect any of those teams uh, behind Pittsburgh to win out. I could I could consider I could think of maybe a lot of them going three and one possibly, but if Pittsburgh goes three and one the rest of the way, well, I mean that would be still ten and six. You would really think uh, they could get in there at nine and seven. It's going to be tougher. You're comfortable getting in at ten and six. You want to get to the position where the Baltimore game doesn't really matter way too much. And uh, you also uh, don't have a problem with uh, Baltimore getting into a position where they're going ahead and uh, resting their starters. That's fine. Um, yeah, and I know a lot of people are going to go ahead and say, well, no, we want to go ahead and beat Lamar. We want to beat them. No, just get in. I don't care how you win, how you get in. You get in. And uh, don't worry about that. But there's a part of me that thinks if you get into that position and you're playing Baltimore for the last game of the season as well, that uh, Harbaugh's a little bit of a wang enough to go ahead and uh, roll the dice and go ahead and put Lamar Jackson in there. I mean, this is the guy that on, on September 11th, 2011, went for a two-point conversion when they were up by, like, 28 late in the game against Pittsburgh just to be a jerk. And that's, I mean, he's a fantastic coach, but he's a little bit of a wiener. And uh, so I could see him uh, risking the health of Lamar Jackson just to go ahead and put that little screw to Pittsburgh. And so there you go. 
<laughs> I had something good to say until you said that. You completely <laughs> gone. Um, uh, oh, the original question. I was thinking of what my answer was going to be. What was the original question? Is nine and is, seven is enough? Nine, is nine and seven going to be enough? Yeah. I think nine and seven will take a tiebreaker. So that's why nine and seven scares me because I know right now the Steelers have a tiebreaker, but do all the teams that are behind them, how many AFC versus NFC games do they have left? Just because the Steelers have a tiebreaker now, does it mean they'll continue to have it? I also get scary with, scared with these tiebreakers is when you're ahead of one team head to head like the Colts. But if you bring in a third team where that has to go three way, then you get pushed out. I don't like the tiebreaker. I think at 10 and six, they can do it and it might not take a tiebreaker. So I would really prefer the 10 and six. And that's why this week, I think every week it's a really big game. Could the Steelers fall this week and still make the playoffs? Yeah. But then they're going to have to turn around and, and have, and, and beat better competition. So why not, why not win the game? You're picked your favorite to win. Let's do that. I'm sorry, Dave. I, the whole time you were sitting there, I'll bring up Jerry's comment. He says, hey, Wang, no offense. I completely went into Caddyshack. Caddyshack. <laughs> where Rodney Dangerfield gets out of his car at the clubhouse, and he goes, hey, Wang, this place is restricted. Don't tell him you're Jewish. And then he's taking <laughs> pictures everywhere. Hey, Wang, at the parking lot. Come on. So now, for me, <laughs> just by, just by real estate at the Great Wall of China, on the good side. Anyways. <laughs> Oh my! Sorry, Dave. Sorry. All right. No. Hey, they're, they're all right. Teacher. Seattle has two losses. Now they're calling him Wang Harbaugh, on the... <laughs> and so there's a new T-shirt. <laughs> Wang Harbaugh would play Jack. <laughs> okay. All right. So this game coming up. <laughs> this game coming up on Sunday at 4:25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Arizona is going to be huge. Uh, I. I think that Pittsburgh West is going to take on new meaning. I expect there to be a lot of uh, Steeler fans in attendance at this game. Um, there just seems to be a lot of people that flock to that area, whether it's in LA or San Diego when they still have a team. So guys, let's talk about that key matchup, the players to watch that you think are going to be difference makers, X factors, if you will. Um, so give me a player that you're looking for. It could be offense, could be defense, could be one on either, either side. Does not matter a player that you're thinking that is like this player has to really, really play well for this team to come to come through. So Brian, who's who you have in mind for that? I'm thinking Devin Bush jr. Mm. And the reason I'm thinking that is I, with his sideline to sideline speed, and I think with a fast guy, like, yeah, I don't know what's going on right now while I'm speaking, but you guys are chuckling. Uh, it's, it's, it's the live chat. That's the one. <laughs> Everybody weighing harms today. <laughs> you know, I was trying so hard to be good. It, it just came out. That's just how I talk. Um, but, you know, I mean, with with Kyler Murray. He's quick. Um, you would almost think that, uh, you, you know, force him out. He, you saw what happened when you were forcing Baker Mayfield out. And he was, uh, especially in those first couple series of both games, he was really doing some damage and you weren't getting to him. And if a guy like Kyler Murray starts to uh, go vertical, he could kill you. And I think one guy that could... Uh, completely neutralize him would be a guy like Devin Bush. So I'm going to go with Bush. Yeah. I, 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 that's not a bad pick. I don't think at all. Um, I'm going to go because I think Dave, I put gave Dave an assignment. Um, he's trying to find some super chats. Uh, still. Okay. That's the no. only one that I've found. Okay. I don't have any. Great I did not see one. Early. It, there yeah. was one earlier and it got, People don't understand on our end and the back end of things, the comments go away after a time. So if you, you get in, that, I'm looking for it. The got any grapes? No. Okay, there is a children's song on YouTube that that my my son used to love. It's about this duck, um, and this duck uh, dancing down the street, going got any grapes? And so I guess that's what that means. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, it's I, I'm just having flashbacks from we've just gone that. from I'm, everybody Wang Harbs tonight to a kid's duck 
show. Okay. Did you find I, it? I, I found it um, back on my phone because it cuts it off on the screen. Right. It was from, so I can't bring it up, but it was from Cody Marshall. And he said, um, do we sit duck versus the Ravens Ravens? If we get a playoff spot, assuming he's still the quarterback. I don't think so. Uh, I, I think the only way you sit someone is if your spot is locked up when you can't move up or down. And I don't see that being the case for the Steelers, that they would at least have a chance if they're in to still even possibly, I mean, unless they lock up the fifth, but I don't know that they could even lock up the fifth to where they could be the fifth, but not fall to the, to the sixth. Um, it, it would have to be very specific. And then still, because he's a rookie, I still don't know if you take the chance. I think you just keep rolling with your momentum if that's the case, because you're probably going to be sitting in and um, in winning several games in a row, you know, or a lot out of X number, meaning three or four or something like that. Yeah. What about you, Brian? Nah, I'm not I'm not looking that far ahead to say whether you're going <laughs> to sit a guy. I'm just saying that, you know, I, I wouldn't sit him. No. <laughs> We heard it from um, we, we we heard it from himself. Well, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if that really was Devlin Duck Hodges? Yeah. And we, we know it's not, but if it is, he can go <laughs> ahead and tweet that he's watching the show, and then we'll know for sure. So there you <laughs> go. We also have Mr. Big Chest. He pops in every now and then. Yeah, so, but yeah. but he's never tweeted that he's watching the show, and um, his uh, his handle's a little bit different, and his picture's a little bit different. He tried. He he really tried to replicate it, but he he was a little off. One one thing I do want to say about that, they're like, if we have a playoff spot locked up, we don't have to ask if Duck is still a quarterback. Because if we have a playoff spot ro- locked up, we're winning. And we're winning, you know. People still take that he didn't kill us thing that, that Tomlin said in the recent press conference and then repeated. It's a joke because that's exactly – all he was doing when he was asked that question, <clears throat> it was about – um, an answer that he gave after the Chargers game. Uh, they asked, oh, can you give us a real quick synopsis on Duck's performance tonight? He just said he didn't kill us. That was right after the Chargers game. So people asked him about that exact quote. So he said the quote again in, in, in joking, and people have run with it since. Yeah. All right. So, Dave, let's get back to the uh, task at hand here before we oh. go on the tangent. <laughs> Who is your uh, player to watch in this game? Well, Brian almost – took mine. I was torn between two because I wasn't sure who they're going to maybe try to keep, keep an eye on Kyler Murph, Murphy, <laughs> Kyler Murray with, and I'm going to say maybe they might use the other person. So I'll say him, I'm going to go with Mark Barron. Um, that I, that I think it would be really, because you could see based on stuff. I don't know how they're going to play it with, with, is this one of those games where, where we're seeing three linebackers on the field like we did? Wasn't that in Baltimore when we saw all three of them on the field? Yeah. Yep. Because of they're like, oh, the big run game. Well, guess what? That's because it was an, it was a running quarterback. Are the Steelers going to bring in that mentality again? Which wouldn't be terrible that they could go with that three linebacker set. And if they do, then I say both Devin Bush and Mark Barron could, could be key in that situation. Okay, I'm going to go and stay on the same side of the football. I'm going to say two players, and those are the bookends, Bud Dupree and TJ Watt. Uh, I believe the Cardinals have given up at least 43, maybe 42 sacks this season. Um, They've surrendered a lot of sacks of Kyler Murray. They don't turn the football over. They only have nine giveaways this season, which is pretty remarkable. Um, But at the same time, this kid's been under pressure the entire season. The offensive line is not good. Uh, they obviously traded with Pittsburgh to get Marcus Gilbert, and he tore his ACL, so he's out. Um, I think that TJ Watt and Dupree are going to be paramount in keeping him in the pocket. If you watched, uh, even with Baker Mayfield, who is not a runner, he is elusive, but he's not a runner. They struggled, especially in week 11 on a short week, to keep him pinned in. And he even got away a few times on Sunday as well in week 13. So I'm going to say that Watt and Dupree, if they can get home, who knows? Watt might set that record. He might shoot. He might have a huge game and set the uh, personal, the new record for Steelers single game sacks in a season in week 14. Wouldn't that be crazy? So and what does he have? 13 and a half sacks right now? 12 and a half. 12 and a half. So he needs four to beat it. 
Yeah. Four to beat it. Four in four games. And uh, that would also put him in the top 10 uh, all time in Steeler sacks. And he's only played three years. Yes. That's yeah. Insane. Um, insane. Something, something I've wanted to mention earlier and I completely forgot. And I know we're running a little short on time, but I just want to throw this out there is that if we go back to our predictions and stuff before the season and everything, and we talked about this defense and the number of sacks and we were wondering, well, could they get 50 again? I said, I didn't think they would because I've never done three years in a row. I, yeah, I'm com- I completely don't believe that anymore, but we were talking about the number of takeaways. And yes, we were we talking were. about, could they get 22? Oh, my, 25 would be great. 27 would be amazing because they had 15 last year. They have 30. They have doubled last <laughs> year's total in three quarters of the games. That's insane. That's fantastic. And kudos to the Steelers' defense and kudos to uh, Kevin Colbert going out there and getting the guys in the offseason and early in the season to make this happen. And, and they've been healthy on that start? side of the ball. When did that start? What week? What three. were they? Week, week three. Three. Five week three. against San Francisco. Who well, they, arrived? They, 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 had, they, they had two, I think, against San They had two against Seattle. They did. Because one was Sean Davis returned for a touchdown, called back on a penalty by... No, it was a Mark Barron touchdown callback by Sean Davis. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Sean yeah. Davis was involved with it. I know that. So, but yeah, but they've had 28 since they got Minka in week three. This is insane. It's, it is insane. But you know, the funny thing is, is everyone, people like Ed Duchette, who I really don't like anymore. Um, he always points out the failures in free agency, yet he forgets to also pinpoint people like Steven Nelson, who, although hasn't had the turnovers, uh, had the takeaways this year is just played tremendous football. What a great pickup worth every penny. If you ask me, um, just playing great. And no well, one, no one's bringing him up. Everyone wants to talk about Ladarius green. Everyone wants yeah. to talk about, um, Dante Moncrief this year. Everyone wants to bring up these players that didn't pan out Morgan Burnett last year. Well, let's talk about the good as well. Let's not just yeah. talk about that. So, all right, guys, let's do some fantasy focus here is what we always do. Fantasy focus will give you one player to start, one player to bench. If you're into daily fantasy football or if you are just going to play this uh, specific game, which could be an option for you this Sunday on sites like FanDuel. So, Dave, we'll start with you. Who are you starting? Who are you sitting in this week 14 game? Uh, I am going to start. I really want to go with the defense again, but I've done it every week. So I'm going to, I think I might've done this one too. You gotta, gotta go with a hot hand. You gotta go with James Washington. I mean, he's just been increasing his yardage. He's setting new personal records for yards per game every week. So he's really emerging and he really has got that confidence down. So that's great. I am going to sit. I'll be honest with you. (laughs) I'm going to say this because I have them in, I have both of them in two non-daily fantasy leagues that I have. I am sitting Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk or any of the of the Cardinals receivers. I just don't trust that they're going to put up points. All right. Brian, what about you? Well, I'm going to start BSJ, little Benny Snell football. I think he is starting to get going and get a little more traction and you know, become what we thought he was going to be when he was drafted in the fourth round. I really like what he's turning into. I think he helps set things up for Duck Hodges. And uh, along those lines, that's the guy I'm not going to play this week. I'm not going to go ahead and fall into that trap where I think he's going to get better as we go. I do not want to start Duck Hodges. All right. I am going to roll the dice here. And I'm going to say, take a gamble, roll the dice on number 89, Vance McDonald. I like that. The, the, one of the reasons is that yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready this week, and I just spoke with Seth Cox, who's the editor of the Revenge of the Birds site. Um, he is that's the SB Nation Cardinals website. He answered some great questions. name. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, he uh, answered some questions for me, and he talked about how the, the Cardinals defense is just awful against the tight end. He said that Vance McDonald could have a career day against this defense. I'm thinking, oh, okay. I also saw last week Hodges and McDonald connected on a few occasions. Maybe, just maybe, that's where you're going to start. It's a hunch. I get it. Um, 
I would also start the Steelers defense if you're looking for an added bonus because I literally have started them the last, I don't know, four or five weeks, and they have gotten me double-digit points almost every single week. So that's the start. If I'm going to sit someone, um, I'm going to say that if you were thinking of taking a flyer on someone like Kareth White or even Deion Kane, although they're intriguing for the team, not worth it in fantasy football. Okay, so if you're looking for a Deion Kane's really cheap, maybe they'll catch a couple deep passes. Just not seeing it in the cards as of right now. So, you know, ahead, fellas, Brian. I I have learned that I know absolutely nothing about fantasy football. The more that I play, so it was five minutes before the start of the game last week. And I had a rough weekend, and I realized, oh, my gosh, I didn't even look at FanDuel. And I missed the Thanksgiving Day games. So I'm like, I got to get a lineup in. So I just went in, and I just picked guys real fast. Didn't even look. I got four minutes. I got it in. I didn't analyze anything, and I won. And I don't <laughs> – and I haven't won in a long time. I haven't placed in a long time, and and I win. So I'm not bragging about that. All I'm saying is, like, I have no clue what I'm doing anymore. Well, it's funny that you say that because I overanalyze everything and I go in and I get a lineup and then I have a little bit of extra money. So then I want to go and spend it somewhere else, but I don't have enough. So then I change something else to, to go a little bit lower here, a little bit more there. And I end up taking what would be a fantastic lineup and turn it into, into trash. So by overanalyzing it, I end up taking myself out of the running. So there's a lot to be said about that. All right. Let's get down to brass tacks, guys. Prediction time. I'll go ahead and say my prediction from what I said last night. I want to say Lance's too. I wrote down Lance's prediction when he said it last night because I felt like it's worth mentioning all of our predictions, although I don't get Tony's. you guys do a prediction on the hangover, Brian? Uh, it's it's kind of like, uh, Tony, what do you think? He's like, ah, I think they could win. <laughs> that's, <about laughs> yeah, that's pretty much Not it. very concrete. The hangover nope. focuses on the game that just know, was. I it know. doesn't dive that's too much. That's why I Yeah, so, okay. So, the Lance, he actually picked the Steelers to win this game, which scared the bejesus out of everyone in the live chat. Um, Pitt, he said Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Double H says Brian is like the girl who wins the NCAA pool by who by wins by picking cute players teams. <laughs> Do you, do you remember on Cheers, one of my all-time favorite shows, yes. Diane kept winning the poll, and the uh, the uh, first week she won by the, the team with the most dominant state flowers. The next week it was who had foreign-born composers in their city symphony. <laughs> I do remember that episode. I've actually gone back and watched all those episodes. All right, so Lance says the Steelers will win 24-13. to 13. I went and I was really close. I actually wrote this down prior to our show. And I actually said that this, I like the Steelers to win. Shocker, I know. Steelers 27, Arizona 13. Guys, what's your prediction? Dave, we'll start with you. I wanted to, I was so ready to go the Brian Anthony Davis route, and I was going to throw a 29 in there. But then I realized that would mean that. Chris Boswell would probably have to either kick a ton of field goals or miss an extra point. I'm going with the Steelers. I'm going to say they finally hit what they need to hit. They're going to score 30 points and they're going to win 30 to 12 because Arizona is going to miss an extra point. Oh, okay. What about you, bad? I think the Steelers are going to score 30 as well. And I am saying it's going to be 30 to 20 in favor of our Pittsburgh Steelers. There you have it. It's a straight sweep, uh, but I, I don't have them getting to 30. I'm not sure if this offense can do that just yet. So, all right. I think um, the defense can help. Okay. The defense can help. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. All right. Last thing, guys, before we call it a show, I did this over-under with Lance last night, Hater, the Homer and Hater show. And <laughs> um, over-under time, we're going to do four categories. You just tell me quick whether you think the Steelers will be over or under. So the first category are Steelers sacks. Not sack surrendered, but obviously the defense sacking Kyler Murray. Three and a half over under, Dave. Um, the number I had in mind I'm, is barely over. I'm going to say four. Brian? So over. Barely under three. Okay. Takeaways, two. That's not what you said. You said two and a half. No, I wrote it down two. Oh, did you? Well, I'll, good. Get well, I'll, I'll, get to, I'll get to the two and a half later. It's okay. I'm taking a push. Hey. Coward Brian oh, over three. 
Oh, all right. Does the streak end? Giveaways one. Dave. Uh, I want to push again. I want to push. I think it's going to be okay, two so to one. Saying that the streak continues. The streak. Um, you the know streak what? Let's go out on a limb and say let's end the streak and finally go with zero. Oh wow! So it would end at nineteen games. What about you, Brian? I think it continues, but not <laughs> but not poorly. I mean, I think one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Lastly, offensive touchdowns, two and a half. Dave. Let's, uh, well, I said 30, which would be three touchdowns and three field goals. And I said that I think the defense might help set them up for a touchdown, but might not get it. So I'm going to go over. Let's go three offensive touchdowns. Ryan? I was thinking three myself. All right. Very good. Gentlemen, anything to add to the show? Real, real quick, because yeah. he's in the live chat. Ron Reed. Where's this football? I told him he, it took him a couple days to get to me. I could have shipped it on Tuesday, but I didn't hear back from him in time. Just Blaze won the survivor pool. Nice. This is Ron Reed. He 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 won out of League Three. Um, it was pretty it was pretty interesting how it played out. So great job. It was it, it, that was a lot of fun. We've got to do that. I don't know what the prize will be next year, but we're doing the survivor pool again next year. Absolutely. We just got to find a good prize. Yeah. I, I already have the prize. I'll talk to you about it later. It's going to be nice. All right. All right. The last thing I want to say before we call this a show is that today is December 5th. It is uh, obviously uh, Thursday night. Uh, Most of you will be watching or listening to this on Friday. But if you didn't check out the article on Sports Illustrated on Ryan Chazier's father, Vernon, um, I highly recommend you do that. December 4th was the two year anniversary of Ryan Chazier's injury in Cincinnati on Monday Night Football against the Bengals. And although he's made remarkable progress, and I don't think anyone could ever imagine after watching him lay their lifeless from the waist down to where he is now, the struggle continues. And I know that Chazier posted on his social media feed a little video, and he talked about how he's appreciative of everything. And um, so just wanted to bring some attention to that. Sometimes even myself, Chazier, because he's been around and he's moving better, you kind of you don't forget about it but you just don't, you know, you just don't think about it as much. It's been two years, guys. It's been crazy. So don't know if you want to talk about that at all or, or not. You know what? Um, as a Steeler fan, we'll never forget that day as a Steeler fan and the fear. And Tony and I went on right after that show and uh, we were doing the post game at the time. And it was just, uh, we were completely in shock because you never saw anything like that. And to see what he's done, um, what we're seeing is not the struggle that he's gone through. And so it's just amazing all the way around. I know Vernon is a, uh, I haven't read the article. I know Vernon is uh, and has always been a man of great faith. And uh, the uh, support that Ryan Shazier has had from not only the Steeler community and, and a lot from the Steeler community, but the, the support he's had from his family has been absolutely amazing. And uh, I, I'm just, uh, I feel like uh, he was blessed to have that. And so um, it continues and we're so thrilled that he's uh, that he's where he is now. And um, I'm glad he has that man on his side. Dave, anything to add or are you good? That this was, before I was involved as part of the community with, with behind the steel curtain. And I remember that watching that game and how scared I was. And then I was so hopeful afterwards. I'm like, is it just one of those things that was bad right then, but it's really not as bad that it's just uh, that it's just like a, a contusion, a spinal contusion or something like that, 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 that um, oh, who had that years ago for the Steelers that they Tommy, thought was terrible. Tommy Maddox and, Tommy ben, Tommy Maddox. and yeah. ben had a spinal concussion. That, that in like, the that, yeah. Or, yeah. And that they're like, maybe, maybe it's not that. And then I heard about the, the stabilization and I'm like, oh, he may never walk again. And it, 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 I, for some reason I was like, maybe, maybe it's not as bad. And I was holding on to hope for so long. And then it was like watching it all over again. And, and it was so much more than football. It was like football didn't matter at that moment. It was it was all about support of the of the person, and Steelers Nation is always going to love Shazier. That's a guy that hasn't played in, in two years now. That that that's a great jersey to go get. 
that's always someone that if you ever, if he, he is always going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. That would never be a bad choice of Jersey. If you're looking for a Jersey out there to go get. Absolutely. And Brian, you brought up his dad and his, he's a man of faith. You want to read the article. His faith was tested in more ways than one and he wavered. And it's, it's a really, really, really good article. And it gives some insight on actually what happened from a little bit behind the scenes. So that's on sportsillustrated.com. You can Google that and check that out. I didn't want to be a downer at the end of the show, but I thought it was worth mentioning because that just happened. So there you go. Make sure that you check out all of our Behind the Steel Curtain podcasts here on YouTube. If you didn't know we had a YouTube channel, you can search BTSE Steelers Radio at youtube.com. Subscribe to our channel. Like all the videos. That's the best way you can help us. And on top of that, go to the little bell. Hit ring that the bell. bell. Ring that bell. And set up your notifications however you like them. You can set up for push button notifications on your phone, emails. Um, that's the best way to do that. Okay, so make sure you do that on audio platforms, anywhere where you get your podcast, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, you name it. We're there. Search behind the steel curtain or just Steelers, and we should pop up. If you do follow us on iTunes or Google Play, give us a great review. Give us a good rating, a five star rating. It helps with our exposure, and that is something that we are trying to do. Our our community is growing. I just got an email from YouTube today telling us that we have almost we more than doubled our subscribers so far in 2019. So we're looking to continue that growth. That's awesome. And so we thank you all for the the live chat. It's just a, a ton of fun. <laughs> if you haven't figured it out yet, it is a ton of fun. And I always love it when I hear people say, I caught a live chat for the first time and they're in the live chat and they get to see the the comments about Wang Harbaugh, Wang Harb, and stuff <laughs> like that. Everybody Wang Harbs tonight. So um, next time you'll see us, though, is, uh, well, let's hear Dave, you're the burning question, right? Yes. Saturday. Saturday tomorrow. Saturday, probably in the afternoon. Okay. Friday, Lance is, yeah, I said it, and Sunday, Lance has to do is, is soccer mom. And so it's myself and Brian Anthony Davis on the post game. So if anything, join in for some comic relief. There you go. He's <laughs> already FedExing the uh, mask to me. So, uh, <laughs> so we're working on that. And, uh, so I'm actually, I'm looking at, uh, I'm watching tape. I'm trying to be a true professional. I'm watching tape of Lance <laughs> over the, over the last, uh, four to six shows. So I can go ahead and do my best Lance. There you go. You got to work on bad nicknames that don't last. <laughs> bad nicknames, messed up, uh, <laughs> sayings and names and <laughs> You'll be just fine, Brian. You'll be just fine. <laughs> so with that said, guys, thanks for your time. Anyone that's watching live, we appreciate it. And make sure what are you pointing to, Dave? I'm pointing at the duck. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> make sure you follow us on all our channels. Behind the steel curtain.com, your one-stop shop for Pittsburgh Susan. We'll see you next week for another episode of the Steelers Preview.